primary activity, secondary activity. Primary activities relate with direct, uh, you know, relate with direct procurement. Secondary activity relate with indirect procurement as far as the value chain is concerned. Okay, why is it important to distinguish direct and indirect procurement? You know, you, there, there are things that we, you need to know when you're doing direct procurement. There are things that you need to factor in when you're doing indirect procurement. So why are they, why is that distinction important? Here's why. Now there are a number of reasons why you need to understand whether the kind of procurement you're dealing with is direct or indirect. I mean, it is important because not all purchases, not all procurement are created equal. You know, there are things that we, you need to know when you're doing direct procurement. There are things that you need to factor in when you're doing indirect procurement. So why are they, why is that distinction important? Here's why. Number one, the quality of direct procurement has a direct impact on the quality of goods produced. Here's what I'm saying. You see, if you are producing uh, something, if you're producing a phone, okay? Everything, every input or every material or every, you know, the raw materials that you need for that phone. When you're buying them, okay? If you buy inferior product, it simply means that that is going to show in the result of what you do, whatever it is that you are you're creating. And so it's important for you to know that that is direct procurement and whatever I'm buying is going to affect the quality of what you're producing. And if the quality is low, that's going to be reflected in your profits. See, that is not the same as indirect procurement because take something like, um, I don't know, like those stickers or the, 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 the yellow pads or a pen. Sometimes those things don't really, I mean, most of the times, if you, if somebody says, I'd rather write with a blue pen instead of a black pen, that is not, not going to be reflected in whatever product you're producing, okay? So, direct procurement means that you have to be careful because whatever you're buying is going to be reflected in the result of what you've produced. Number two, direct procurement frequently needs to be held in stock so as to maintain service level. And so by doing that, you ensure that there is no disruption to the production process which is not necessarily the case with indirect procurement. Indirect procurement are usually made as and when required. In so doing, you minimize the amount of stock held with its associated cost. Number three, direct procurement calls for collaborative relationship approach with suppliers since they are likely to be long-term kind of procurement. So, I mean, if you're producing whatever it is that you're producing, it means you're going to produce it for a very long time. And that means that uh, you need to be in a, a good relationship with your suppliers to ensure that there is a steady supply of the raw materials. That is not the same with indirect procurement. Indirect procurement are mostly transactional in order to take advantage of price competition. Number four, direct procurement is more likely to be carried out by the procurement and supply chain function while indirect procurement are more likely to be done by end user. Look, since direct procurement is going to affect the thing that you're producing, it's most likely to be done by the professional person in charge of procurement. But uh, indirect procurement could just be anybody. I mean, you could send just about, again, uh, it kind of just depends on the service that, that you're offering, okay? So if you are selling bottled water, then anything to do with the bottled water becomes part of the direct procurement. But then things to do with office lunch and all that stuff, those are just indirect procurement and anybody can do that. Well, anybody who's... You get the point. So that is the reason why you need to understand the distinction between direct and indirect procurement because it ultimately just comes down to how it's going to affect whatever you're producing or how it's going to affect your profits. If you choose to look at this from an accounting perspective, then the cost of procurement becomes part of cost of goods sold and a reduction or increase in such cost will affect your gross profit and not the net profit. But indirect procurement tends to end up as either indirect cost or overhead. This cost will affect net profit but not gross profit. So let's move on to categories of indirect procurement. So we have production material, we have commodity procurement and we have goods for resale. So, production material. 